So real hard point. We're running it back from the winners' finals. This is uh, this is now game four. We're up two one in the series at this point. So right off the bat here. We are starting P3 sides. That means uh, we get to the hill quicker, obviously. We get to the hill quicker here. Uh, Brandon, or sorry, Ken is the one going to the left side. He actually gets teamworked uh, by these two guys on the, on the, on the left. So they're now going to try and break from uh, the bridge side. And that's, you know, it was basically either you break from middle or you break from the bridge. Because they didn't, like, get any pressure towards middle, this allows AG to do this type of flank on, on Caesar here. Then it's just a 1v1 for the hill. And unfortunately, he doesn't win that. <clears throat> but the, the good thing about this is we're still spawning pretty close to time. And since Dante's not collecting time here, and he's decided to push out bridge, which is, you know, a good play. You just make sure you can put pressure on one part of the map and just have your teammates get to the hill after they spawn up. So what we can do here is... Uh, you know, just hold our ground. Obviously, we can look for a possible flank here. That, that's a good comm by Ken. I don't know if someone commed at him or he just looked himself. But he looks behind him, gets that kill. Now we know everyone else is in front of us because we knew, you know, Sib was the only one still left alive for the team. Meanwhile, while this is going on, number two, this is Ant. He's pushing up uh, and trying to take a, a little bit of a, a flank route here. He takes a flank route through P2, so that on the other side, while they're spawning up, it's, it's complete chaos. So not only do they have to get to hill, they also have to watch their, their you know, caution pinch. That allows Ant to help out on time. We're still soaking on time. So really good job. And now at this point, they don't really know what to do in terms of, uh, actually, I mean, obviously they know what to do, but it's a hard situation to determine what you want to do because you either you know, setting yourself up for new P2, or you're making sure that everyone off of old is being accounted for, and you kind of just want to hit through old, or, or like at least attempt kills towards P1. You know what I mean? So it it seems like what they want to do is keep keep pressure old, and I I like that play because if you keep pressure old and you win those gunfights, then it's you know a really really good scenario, and you're gonna spawn up regardless. You know, back here anyways. So what they even have is number seven. Kismet, they have him flank boxes. But we pick it up. That's a nice two piece by AG. Last guy alive towards you. Get that kill. And that that was what they didn't want to happen, really. Where, you know, they maybe get one, maybe two kills, but they die off old and now they're spawning deep back here. I really gotta fix this pen here. They're spawning deep back here. And we already have pressure towards the front. So this is like really, really good from, from our perspective because at this point, um, you know, we have the old control. We have front new pressure. We know that they're spawning in the back here. So at the end of the day, that's really all we could ask for. Um, and yeah, let's like, obviously we're going to start this game pretty hot with a 21 and, and one um, score here. And it's in this building. And even gets another kill. Because of this pressure, because we've left time and started to pressure towards the back, they're now spawning back uh, P3 here. So these are these are huge kills. This is huge kill for Paco, huge kill for you know Caesar over here. If they can stay alive, they can buy time for these people coming off of spawn. And since they spawn in the back here, we spawn boxes because this is being blocked. I really gotta fix this pen. How do people do this without a tablet, bro? This is being blocked. This is being blocked. So we spawn here. So once we spawn here, we kind of know that like there's people behind us. Or we should know. I don't know. I don't know if Ant reads that. I don't think he realizes that they're not spawning back here because it, because it's white time and because we're like kind of contesting the back. I think it's more so. It's, you know, it's it's kind of both, but. I think he realizes, or he doesn't realize that they're spawning deep here, which is hard to realize because, you know, we didn't, uh, or we're not technically like blocking the back. So he's just assuming that they're going to spawn the back. 
Ken and AG stay alive towards the lobby, that area. Get this kill off the guy pitching P1. You see, you notice Brandon's not getting on time because he doesn't want to be a free kill. If, if he gets on time right here, Kismet, number seven, knows where he is and can kill him for free. He doesn't want to do that. But he wants to help out, you know, the hill regardless. So once Ken and AG start working these guys towards caution, now he activates and now he gets the kills on time. Ant's now towards garage over here too. Brandon tries to help him out. He gets one, dies, but whatever. Look at what, look at the situation at this point. We're now holding hill. We now have back spawns. This is, this is great. This is just what we want. So that's why it was so important for Paco. I think it was Paco and Caesar to stay alive back here because if they die, you know, we just get hill control and spawn control. Huge two piece by Ant middle. So you're either breaking from the front or you're breaking through through middle, right? You're never going like super deep, obviously. It just takes way too long. But if you're breaking from the middle, we need to have eyes on that. Obviously, Ant himself likes to hit out caution or lobby to try and, you know, make sure that no one can take this route over here. And not only does he get one, he gets two. And what that opens up is obviously we're still going to be holding time here. He can now pinch out boxes like this if he wants to and be even more of a chaotic nuisance towards like the New York side. Because they know they need to account for him. So Kismet obviously is going to take this route to try and counter this, and he does. But it was just like a free play on Ant's part because he had already gotten the two kills. He now can take a free pinch if he wants to. Really good play by AG. You know, now that Ant's died middle, he knows that Kismet is trying to hit middle while the rest of the guys are trying to hit the front side. So we have the two ARs front watching for anyone trying to push up the ramp. And then we have our last guy, you know, obviously the last guy's Ant, but since he died, our last guy in line is, is AG. He's going to be holding caution from a, a dirty off angle. So if Kismet tries to take, you know, a deeper route through P1 like this, it's a free kill. Now everyone's accounted for. We're still holding time. This is perfect. We're going to go up 50 points to start the game. And they're still hitting old because what they're trying to do is, I mean, they want to set up for P3, but again, hitting old like this is just going to give us so much more opportunities to work with because we can just get pushed out right now. We even leave the time. We're just like, you know, let's take the timing trying to get pushed out. Obviously, they're still going to spawn here, but now they don't have boxes covered. They don't have, you know, good P1 pressure. There's only one guy. Look at this, we're just going to double through boxes. And because of the timing of us pushing off, you know, Dante doesn't have this. He doesn't see that we've pushed off into boxes yet. He can kind of deduce it, but he's still looking at it. And there's only one guy looking boxes, and we have two people. Paco's the only one, and he gets traded out. Obviously, number five now has to look at it. He gets the trade, but what do you know? We have another person, Shotzi, who hit through middle. He can get that kill. Last guy alive middle. Or sorry, last two guys alive. One guy towards garage, last guy middle. Kenny can play for this kill. He gets it. The last guy wasn't even in the play. Dante wasn't even in the play because he was late to this specific cut on the people going boxes. There's nothing he could do. They just didn't, we, like, we just didn't go to the right, you know? So we, we cut when we cut because we know we have the timing to possibly catch them off guard through boxes. Now we're holding from the front. Obviously, at this point, it's just a win on the hill already because we've broken it so easily. So anything extra here is just icing on the cake. Unfortunately, they're still spawning the back, so it's still easy re reinforcements for them. But any kill we get here is, is pretty big. Huge two-piece by Ken. I keep saying huge two piece. I, I don't. I don't mean to say it because like it does diminish the fact that if it's a really really good two piece, it's just a two piece that like helps us out a little bit. But I keep saying like huge two piece as if it's massive game changing. But I gotta stop saying that. Not every two piece is, is huge like that one. It's still a good two piece. So twenty seconds left. They have full control of the P three. There's no point in us, you know really hitting boxes and trying to hit this out. We have the lead, you know, just stay in the lead. Once we know that someone spawned up and can refill this, then we can hit boxes like this. So that's not that bad, but 
you know, we just want to make sure we hold this rotation for the for the P4. Accounting for everyone. We know that with these with these kills, everyone is is accounted for. No one snuck past. Obviously, this guy Paco is trying to sneak through boxes, but we're still accounting for them. So we know we're always ahead towards this P4 compared to them. So you can hit old. I'm just saying, like, make sure you have people to to still like refill this if if you do hit old. And that's what we do. We're we're making sure that we still have people towards P4. So you may say, like, why why do we get off time here? This is just because we know that they're probably going to hit through the back. Obviously, we know they spawn here. They can either hit through the back or hit through boxes. We're going to have trust number one and number three to be the ones that hold time and hold the pinch slash boxes. And we can, I think they tack them. Yeah, they actually tack kids right here. So we know that they're, like, at least hitting one, mo most likely two, at, at like, at the least towards the back. So we're, we're going to have these two guys take care of the back while number three gets time number one watch the pinch but that's a that's a like i keep saying huge but three piece or sorry two piece by paco you know one's a team kill but him getting both these kills sets them up for like a decent opportunity to break because there's only one guy left on hill and the other guy's watching the pinch so at this point ken needs to help out time but again it might be just too late brandon holding time Gets one, but just trade out right away. And this is a situation you don't really want to be in. Like they're now holding from boxes and from close time towards the, towards this truck here. We're spawning towards P2. Have to hit down the ramp. It's it's such a hard break from this side. It's just it, like there's so many things that you have to look at when you're just trying to like go down this ramp. And they're, you know, posted up on the, the car heady. They're crossing with people boxes. You have to basically look two ways, but you can't. So not the greatest hold. Obviously, AG is going to use his streak here because, you know, P4 is a, a really big money hill. So if you can get some sort of leftover scrap time on this, it's huge. Look at Ant. Ant takes the super deep route while this is happening too. He doesn't even go through P1. He goes through P5, flanks around towards P3. Gets his kill on Caesar. So now we get the first two kills because obviously the, the, the AG streak got one as well. Ken gets one. We break back on in. So at least we get that last 20 seconds. So it's not all for nothing. That initial break was just that, that Paco two piece. So we can't get two piece like that and let them, you know, break from the back for free like that. So. Once again, we stay ahead on new because we had a really good rotation to it. And being chaotic inside their P3, we know that they're spawning that back here. We're already on time. We know that they haven't hit old because number one was on, was on old this whole time. And now number one, instead of hitting through boxes and backing him up, he's just going to play a side for us. So Ken's going to go wrap back our side. He can play this little angle here on the stairs basically to watch our U. And now what they need to do off their break is not only do they have to worry about people bridge pushing up like this, they also have to worry about Ken here. So we're, we're crossing that way as well. And they have to basically clear Ken before they hit the hill. Look at how they try and pressure him. Look at, look at this. Because Ant spawns up right away, he goes straight to Ken, helps him out. Trades are, are completely in our favor. They're still trying to break through P1. AG can now push off from like the, the bridge or hillside. AG and Ant just teamwork this perfectly. Off of this hold, again, spawning P3. You need to make sure you're watching what? P1 and street. Brandon has the, the, the info street. And he could say, you know, they're coming street. They're not coming street, whatever. Watch your P1. We're going to double P1 because we don't see anything street. AG gets two. Kismet gets two for it though as well. But what do you know? We can adjust this. Ken's now going to help. He can adjust and watch bridge. He gets one on Dante. They teamwork Kiz. Perfect trades. Even though they get the two piece, again, trades are still all about information. And we know now that they're two, you know, double hitting P1. And we can just play for it. Oh, 
Hydra with the two piece to get us off time. So, it, you know, gets us off that last, let's say, 20 seconds. <clears throat> get back on it, though. Obviously, since we're on P5 scrap, we're not on P1 old or P1 new. P1 new and P5 scrap. If you had both of them, you were just absolutely destroying them. So it was kind of like you take one or you, you get the other. Uh, for the rotation to it, though, we would love to send people. <clears throat> we would love to send people towards this old time P5 because if you have this scrap time, it's uh, first you could get any possible kills you and anyone that might be going street. What you can also do is it opens up possibilities to full flank through P3. You can, you know, cut if you get kills straight to P1. Um, regardless, you know, it wouldn't really make sense to just have someone off of this old time. You know, let's say we have one guy here and then have everyone just go through P1 because you want to make sure that you're creating distractions for them. So if they, let's say, get the kill off of old time, they can now just focus their P1 and even hit out the pinch on their end too uh, through our lobby. So containing that and making sure that they're all just p1 and you can just cut to it was just such such an easier way to do to do it or to like to go about it and and what do you know it creates a perfect scenario for the p1 for us where we're holding from the good side and it's gonna get pushed up because he can take the chow if anyone loses the gunfight, they can just get traded from, you know, number two or number four. Number one, Ken over here, he's pushed up bridge. He can make sure that he has all of the right side for us. So all we need to do is basically watch these two lanes. And, you know, if someone comes off spawn, maybe pick up the pinch or from like one of these areas. But as long as we're keeping them in front of us, that's that's all we would need. So you see how they break this here? Because they get the two piece on our two subs, this makes Ken have to react. He has to now go towards you to help out Brandon for these people coming here. Number six now takes that timing. He can hit out you because no one's watching the right side anymore. That's how two pieces can really change how you know much a hold is is working, obviously. You just don't have enough eyes to look at everything anymore. So now Ken has to worry about his back. He's even getting shot from him. That's why he's trying to micro position behind this wall. But what do you know? Because we got two two deaths over here, they're now breaking from literally every angle that they could possibly from this close side. Eski, stairs, you. There's three lanes and there's only two people for us to watch stuff. So we try and cross the people towards Eskies and, and stairs, but there's just that one extra guy with Dante. So same thing with us, kind of like what New York was doing in that previous one, uh, the previous P1. You know, there's 20 seconds left. We still want to hit through old to make sure because of the free play of the, we're still going to spawn the back regardless. We still want to make sure we're hitting old just to limit their possibilities on, on the next rotation. So you you break this, we, we hit through old. Now it's so much easier for us. Look how much easier it is for us. Now the guys all spawn just hit out towards P2. We have P1 old. They now have to worry about boxes pinch. They now they can't pinch themselves because we'll take care of it. So they only have one choice of just to hit the, to the front, but they also have to watch uh, their side pinch through boxes. I'm surprised Ken didn't go towards, uh, you know, P2 over here. I think he might be expecting a possibility of them taking a deeper route here because we haven't seen anyone recently. But, you know, obviously with Codcaster, we see that they're all hitting through uh, this P4 side. And once that happens, you know, obviously AG had taken this route. Ken's now going to go back towards P2. AG wins a, a big one on this guy towards the, the Humvee. And then Ken wins the, on the last guy. So we know all four accounted for. We can now hit back through old if we wanted to. AG is going to get pushed out through garage. And still on old. Ken can help him on old. And then Brandon can get time off of his spawn. Now we're up 100 points. I don't know how they spawn here. Uh, I, I, if I had to guess, it's this vertical line. So 
you see where number three is? I think there's something to do with, you know, a vertical line of us being more pushed back than them, which would technically be blocking the spawn for us there and making this open for them. I don't know 100% though. I'm not sure why they spawn. I, I'm pretty sure that's why it... Because they spawn first. It's not like number two spawns first. Let's see if number three is deeper here. I, it's got to be something like that, right? Because we're on time, it's not like it's white time. Does he spawn when it's white time? Maybe that's what it is. No, we're on time. I don't know, that is, that is kind of weird. Regardless, you're going to have to play for it because we spawn weird, so we know something's fucked. So now we're going to have Brandon look our back. Really good job coordinating with these with these two, or like I guess all three of them, on killing these guys short. Last guy alive is going to be towards the gate, and we can just play for him. Number one is still playing for a boxes pinch, so number one has our front. We get our kills uh, towards gate and short. Huge, huge kills, especially those two towards the towards like caution short. We spawn out, so we know that they spawn close, so we can play for this. I like this play by Ant. He's going to wrap, help our gate. Number one, Ken. Can look towards caution unfortunately he gets team shot but we still have brandon looking at it too ag can now push towards this this uh pinch over here wins it wins a nice one on caesar here dante is going to take the route towards p3 because he knows at this point 184 to 59 they're kind of screwed so they have to just get ahead and and win p3 maybe because if if they if they get chained here which is it's looking like it if they don't take a route because we're holding from the front side we can just you know, off our spawn, rotate for P3, rotate, you know, to bridge to help out the rotation. And if no one from then takes a route and tries to hide behind in the back over here, they just lose the game. It's like, it's way too much of a, a lead at this point. So we lose this gunfight here. I don't think we know that Dante is, is alive yet still uh, and is in our, our back P3. But what Brandon's going to do here is he's just going to go back shops and, and play for any kills, but most importantly, stay alive. Okay, he doesn't stay alive, but that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to look for kills back here. They're missing Kenny. Ken's going to kind of refill the route that, that Brandon was taking and go shops here. Block one of the spawns, maybe block both of the spawns, have them spawn out. And just confine them to an area. Unfortunately though, you're playing so tight here that it's still pretty easy to hold down the lanes. But that's just because they stay alive and it's just it's good play by them because they're not taking chows, they're making us push into them. They're just literally hiding useless and holding their back. They're tweaking about Ken because he got a kill and he's, he's now just finessing back here in the back shops. And they kind of have to, they don't have to necessarily play for him, but they have to make sure that he doesn't do anything like so intentionally like bad for their team because he can really fuck things up over here if he gets like another kill. And that's what he does. So he gets another kill. Now, since number six is pushed out, number seven is the only one on hill. Number one is still in our back, so, you know, or in their back, so eight still has to work, uh, look for both people's street and a possibility of Ken still somewhere around here. So they don't send two people to go look for him. They actually send someone to look for him rather than just playing like a cross to the hill to make sure that you can't hit the hill. And it kind of screws them over, but they get a few kills regardless, though. We get the trades. And there's still 30 seconds left. And at this point, we'll take that. To go up 210 to 85 or, or something like that. We just need to make it mixy. At this point, it's just make every break opportunity mixy because we know that they're going to rotate early. Look at this route. Right off of old, Ant's taking the super deep route. Number six spawns useless, so they should probably know based on their deep spawn that, that, that someone's pinching. I don't think they pick it up, though. Or not in time though. Sky, Caesar Skies tries to tries to to look for it, but it's not in time. <laughs> it tries to do some divey thing, but he just gets straight out regardless. But because 
because we don't live on both sides, we kind of get fucked here because they're spawning good. So with with Ant pinching this like this, and us not staying alive towards garage, uh, it actually ends up fucking us over. Because now we're spawning, you know, unfavorable side. They're holding P4 with the favorable side with the favorable spawns. Again, uh, trying to break through this ramp is so, so annoying. Ant, lovely, lovely route through P1 here. Make them at least look for it. They don't, they're not looking for it. They're not accounting for it. He gets a kill. Should get trade out right here. Actually, doesn't get it instantly. So that's that's big that he at least stays alive. Nades this. He's now going to play this corner for anyone that might be spawning and trying to hit him out. Love this play. Love this play. So now Dante gets cut. AG had also taken a route to hit through P1 to double up the pinch with Ant. Number one and number four get, get the kill on number eight. On the front side, number eight doesn't even see them coming. Or at least, you know, Brandon puts the moves on. Offenses a little bit. Last guy alive on the hill. Great break. Great break. Obviously, it all starts with, with Ant getting this first kill through boxes and then staying alive. If he gets instantly traded here, this doesn't happen. But him staying alive with 40 health and making this play, like Dante even tries to clear him and he still somehow gets the kill. And then all these plays to to break these with these final few kills. Perfect. 25 seconds. Again, as long as you can get a good break on in, you don't even need to be in, you know, the rotation win when you're up this big. You're up 100 points. Early rotation to P5 for us anyways. We get kills P1. Number two and number one, both team working P1 kills. And, or sorry, AG's already pushed out on their side so he can get a free kill on anyone that might be rotating for them. We get pushed out on hill. AG can even get pushed up even deeper. He doesn't, whatever, we bump. Bump off time, get pushed up. Bump off time, get pushed up. As long as we're still creating pressure on this side, Look at Ant here. They have to hard clear him before they get to the time. So this is why you bump off the time like this. Free kill for Ant. Now he's on the hub B just finessing. They have to kill him before they get to the hill. Number 7 actually took a P1 route. I think we're a little bit late to this. Yeah, number 7 took a P1 route. I think AG, if he just hits this out and at least makes sure that they're not coming... Uh, through P1 because right now what, what we have is you know number one has this U pinch but not for long once they start actually breaking on in he doesn't really have it anymore or I think he even you know Ken even shoots him but uh, AG doesn't activate off it so I'm surprised regardless maybe or a little few seconds late it's not a big deal AG still gets a one on the bridge to, to make sure that they can't get time any finesse is almost gets a second on Hydra Brandon gets the kill on the, the weakened Hydra. So we still get the, the trade kill regardless. They're still not soaking time. Double hit through P1. They have to watch their back and their U. Dante's going to get caught off guard here. You know, Caesar wins a one over here, but he's the last one alive for their team. Just play trades. Just play off of each other. Now we're soaking time easily. We know Sibs here. He actually gets two. That's huge three piece so he keeps them alive for a little bit longer but regardless we're still gonna you know win this map play it's it's too much of a, a hill to climb for them p1 hold they, they have old p5 again so they have this pressure here they have new p1 so again what they need to do watch their pinch that's what number eight is going to do and watch their stairs and eskies i mean left side's already cleared because you know dante has it he can he can pinch our lobby if he wants to as well but they just got to make sure they have our uh, the, their pinch. And that's what Paco does. So good play by Paco. But what do you know? Double pinch. They don't recognize it quick enough. And he knows that Ann is just going to have freebies here. Because they're not expecting us to double pinch like this. I, need, I think Paco turns right at the right time. But unfortunately, he's not quick enough with the trigger. 
and that's just what happens. You double pinch, you, you create chaos on, on both sides. They have to look both sides. Easy break. Really good Rio. Especially by Ann and AG. Those two subs absolutely had a map. For not for not spawning in, in the Karachi control, that was a that was a really good map by them.